Next up on the Cosmic News Network, first contact with Joshua Pert. Good morning, Earthlings. Good. How you doing today? Good. How you doing today? Welcome morning, to First Contact Radio. How you doing today? Welcome to First Contact Radio. To talk about all these things I'm talking about is because in life, everything is energy. Every single thing that's out there. Yo, it's First Contact with Joshua Poet. He's the man on the mic, just in case you didn't know it. Covering news from all around the globe, from the weather and space to UFOs. He'll talk politics and make you open your eyes. Conspiracy theories and government lies. He'll dig it all up and try to find the proof. Cause it's time to demand the truth. It's time. First Contact it's time. Radio. We it's have time to demand the truth. It's time. First Contact it's time. First Contact Radio, we have arrived. First Contact Radio, it's time to demand the truth. Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing today? Welcome back to First Contact Radio. Glad you could be here. Today is Tuesday, the 24th of June, 2014. So today we have a sun sign in Cancer. We're there for the rest of this month and then halfway into next month. Our moon sign which changes every two and a half days roughly currently is in Gemini it made the transition from Taurus to Gemini it completed that transition today this morning 6 or 5 p.m. so just about two hours ago so we've gone from an earth sign unto an air sign Taurus the bull is all about the earth bringing the practical things of the spirit down into the physical world manifesting beauty, abundance, lots of good things surrounding Taurus the Bull. But now we're going from Taurus the Bull into a mental sign, a mind sign, an air sign, all about words, communication. So our unconscious mind is dealing with issues of communication and words and actions, just like our conscious mind was dealing with all last month. Now it's our unconscious mind which is dealing with it for the next couple of days. We also have a Mercury in retrograde. Mercury is the sign that deals with Gemini. So just keep that in mind as you're going about your activities through the course of this day. In less than a half an hour from now, we've got an aspect that's moving into place, which is between Gemini, the Moon, and Venus. This is a conjunction. It means when two signs are 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 in the same general proximity or right next to each other, and so what we've got is Gemini, communication, words and actions, and it's right next to Venus, which is love and imagination. So these two can get along well, you know, communications, good communication of the of our imagination, of what's inside of ourselves, way to express the love. So there's a good thing. These Gemini and Venus can go well together. And so we'll find out how well they play when they get together to, for today's adventure. And then later this evening, we have a square. Remember, squares are lessons. Lessons that when we get beyond, I like to think of it as a square is a wall. And we come up to the wall, and we can either stop and not go any further, or we could find a way around the wall. And if we get around the wall, guess what? We've just become much stronger because we've learned the lesson of how to get past the blocks that we have in our lives. So here we have a lesson between Gemini communication, words, actions, discernment, and Neptune. Neptune is challenging us to look at, at things another way from a new perspective. Okay, so our communication is dealing with a block of looking at things. So basically we're going to have to maybe find a new way to express ourselves in communicating because maybe the way we're communicating isn't quite getting the point across. So we're challenged to look at things from a new perspective. Okay, some things to consider there. Our numerology for today is the number one. Here's how we arrived at that number. Six for the month, two plus four for the day, 24th, and the year 2014. Altogether, we've got a 19. One plus nine equals 10, and one plus zero is one. So today is a one-tone day. One, as we know, is the magician. Magician, 
This is Mercury also. Two magicians standing together side by side would be an 11. One magician is a 1. The magician is all about focus, concentration. You notice on the table here all of the tools are available. So let's jump over and look at the highlights of the tarot and look at the magician. Okay, I know we've looked at this before, but we're going to look at it again because repetition is what helps us to remember. The magician. The title refers to man as the director of the force by which he transforms his consciousness and reaches the stage known to occultists as initiation. The number one, which is geometrically symbolized as a point, means concentration, attention, a limiting of the field of activity. This refers to the practice which is absolutely indispensable to all aspirants for truth. Until you have learned how to concentrate, you cannot perform the great work. Study this key carefully and it will help you to learn to concentrate, for its symbolism was created to that end. The roses of the abur of the arbor symbolize desire, and it has been wisely said that desire is the motivation of evolution. The central figure of the po of, by his posture clearly indicates that he draws power from above. This is a central point of the occult doctrine because you cannot even begin to use the subtler forces of nature unless you realize it has nothing to do of yourself, but simply act as a channel through which the life force expresses itself. His up lifted wand is a symbol of his ability to direct the natural forces with which he works also of hermetic axiom that which is above is as that which is below and that which is below is as that which is as above the horizontal eight represents dominion strength and control and is also a mathematical sign of infinity the magician's left hand points to the ground in the gesture of concentration the black hair bound by a white band symbolizes the limitation of ignorance by knowledge. The red rose is action and desire. The white undergarment symbolizing wisdom is encircled with the serpent of eternity. The table is the field of attention, which is the workbench of the magician. The implement are the wand, the cup, sword, the pentacle. They represent the fire, the water, the air, and the earth. Also will, imagination, action, and physical embodiment. The garden is the subconscious mind which is cultivated by the acts of attention of the self-conscious mind. From this garden spring all the powers of subconscious. Lilies, because they are white and six-petaled, represent the abstract perception of truth as well as the cosmic laws and principles by which the universe is sustained. And again, the Hebrew letter Baith. Looks like Beth. It's pronounced Baith. Baith means house. Okay. We think of Bethlehem, where we're told Jesus is from. This gives us an indication that there was something more than meets the eye to that story. Okay, But as you can see, definitely everything on these cards, everything on this card has a purpose. The colors, the positions, so on. So my suggestion is if your desire is to want to really learn about the system of tarot, go to this Boda, Builders of the Aditum, and go to the highlights page here, the highlights of the tarot. Just follow the links along and go to the page, and you'll find out as you study each card that the learning process really is much more than what you realize. And just take one card a day. And if you really want, take one card a week. And every day, come back to one card and just reread over it. One week, one card a day. And if you did that on your own personal study, I guarantee you that you will come to a understanding about these cards much greater than what you have right now. I guarantee that you will. Because you can't help it. Because as you look at these cards, you're learning the color. And once you learn the color yellow, you understand what yellow means throughout all of the cards. So every time you learn a new card and you learn these symbols, as you see the symbols on in the further cards, you already have that foundation of meaning. Now you can build upon it because that's what happens. Different cards build upon each other. For example, the magician. The magician is here as the magician, but then later the magician is also 
the chariot driver. The magician is also the hermit. And so you start to see that these same characters are involved with the storyline and they come in at different aspects. And you begin to understand what that's all about as well. So check it out, Builders of the Atatum. And if you really want to have an in-depth study, do their home study course. It's a correspondence program. Do that. Get the lessons and you'll really find that what you understand really evolves a lot. And then, of course, let's jump over here to our Tree of Life. So our numerology for today, number one, is right here, coming from the crown. We have the sign for Cancer right down here, the Cancerian symbol for the chariot. It's right here, and our moon sign, Gemini, right here. So everything is all coordinated right around this area here, around our understanding, what we understand, and then how we're going to take that back to the heart and make sure we're not taking our understanding to a warlike place to be too severe, too serious. Just being too serious in life isn't really any fun. We all know people in life that are very, very serious, right? They're very serious about everything. Can't make jokes with these people. Because, you know, if they make a joke, it takes them off point. They really can't be an effective person if they're having fun in life. They have to be serious. Uh, I know people like that. You know people like that. And uh, if that's what they got to be, that's what they got to be. But it doesn't seem so uh, necessary. Current moon phase, 7% of the way full. We will be at the new moon in the next two days. Space weather tells us that Mars and Spica are the two stars we're going to check out tonight in the southwest after dusk. Arcturus will be high above them, so we're going to see Mars and Spica low in the southwest, and above it Arcturus. Watch Mars moves closer to Spica day by day. They'll pass each other on July 13th. So Mars and Spica are two that we're going to be seeing for a while. And that's what we're looking at tonight. Mars, Speaker, Arcturus. Arcturus up on top, Mars and Speaker on the bottom. Okay. Mayan Oracle, three-tone day. Three-tone day on the wave spell of the eagle, which is vision. So we're looking for the vision. We're on a vision quest here. Today we're at the synchronicity or the navigation of our vision. Sometimes we have to learn to be synchronistic, let synchronicity occur to know that our vision is in synchronicity with a bigger plan than just our own. The phrase is I activate in order to evolve bonding synchronicity. I seal the matrix of navigation with the electric tone of service. I am guided by the power of birth. So today we have an electric earth guided by the dragon. Space weather. Solar wind is currently at 317.0 kilometers per second. Planetary K index is quiet between 1 and 3. One corona hole, yet no notice that we're going to be feeling anything from that. M class flare possibilities down to 5, X class to 1. And geomagnetic storm activity is dropping off quite drastically going all the way down in the next 24 to 48 hours from 40 down to 25 and in the higher latitudes down as low as 15. And over at the Jewish calendar today, 24th on our calendar but 26th Sivan on the Jewish calendar and the thought for today, I like this calendar because it does have a thought for every day. Wisdom, it's called youthful wisdom. Wisdom lies in the future, and from it there, there it speaks to us. There is no such thing as wisdom of the past. Wisdom preceded the world, and wisdom is its destiny. With each passing moment, wisdom becomes younger. As we come closer to the time when it is born and breathes the air of day. Our ancient mothers and fathers, the sages, all, from, all those from whom we learn wisdom, they are not the guardians of the past. They are the messengers of the future. The truth can never be old-fashioned. It was never in fashion to begin with. All right. There you have it.
that is what gets us started for today. That brings us up to UFO news, so let's get to it. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. All right, Dirk. Thank you very much. First story today takes us over to Putney, London. This was back on the 13th. The footage is a bit shaky at the start. It also has noise from a plane or landing taking off from which is not linked to the triangle UFO. At two minutes, it's clearly three bright orbs in a triangle formation, traveling so slow that it seems to be hovering. Recorded on the 13th of June at 5, uh, 9.40 a.m. to 9.55 a.m., traveling from north to the south, elevation about 60 degrees. Okay, through binoculars, there were three gold lights reflecting the sunlight filled with fine gold filament structure. All right, so it's almost a three-minute video. There's our object in question, and he said there's three of them once we get a couple of minutes into this, so... Let's do that. Okay, we see, oh, there we go. We can see them splitting apart right there, and there are infinitely more than one. Okay, next, let's move from there on to the next one. This was UFO sighting over Ajaccio, Corsica, France on the 17th. This was a bright static hovering a blob of light in the sky above Corsica, France. There it is right there. It moves left behind the building. Okay, that's quite interesting as always. Those single lights that we usually see. It's a 1 minute and 14 second video. Not quite certain what it is. And next, two UFOs recorded over Orange County Freeway, June 18th. Here's an amazing catch in Orange County, California this weekend. It shows two glowing orbs buzzing around over the freeway. The couple said they saw it for 20 minutes, stating, It's the strangest thing I ever saw. Also, if you look carefully at the orb, you'll notice there are metallic edges around it. This makes me think it is a window. The edges of the craft around the glowing window take up about 25% of the craft, but are invisible unless you put this video in HD. Okay. Here's our object. When we were on our way home from Irvine this night, in the sky, then two of them, then just one. We followed it all the way to Dana Point, about 10 miles, then we pulled over to get these crazy videos. I'm not saying it's an alien, but it is a UFO for sure. Here we got two of them. Here we got the video. Three minute, 13 second video. So right now we're looking at an orange ball just above. Okay, here's the object right there. And one from Summit. Dana Point, the lawn area. Okay. It's looking to get brighter. Alright, we're going to leave that one there. It's out in that uh, Dana Point area, San Juan Capistrano. Oh my God! There's a couple of them right there. Then that one's gonna go out. Oh my God! Oh, what out? What is this? Okay. Uh huh. And here we get things going that off and on. Weird. Let's give it you like I want to. Okay. Trails. And one more. This last one's a minute twenty, so. You can see they sat there. It's a couple, a guy and a girl, sitting there and videoing, videoing this. Okay. And they're watching as they go on and off. So there you go. All right. Next. Next, here we have a video photographed over at Mexican Pyramid. Last year, an Oscar. Oscar Ponce was visiting Teoac Teoacan in Mexico and took some photos. 
One of the photos shows a brown metallic saucer-shaped UFO above the pyramid of the moon. Okay, so we have a 3 minute 53 second video. Ha Haimi Masan is telling the story in here. and Let's jump over here. There you go. Teotihuacan. This is what was seen. It's a pretty good size object. That is being seen there above Teotihuacan. Okay, so I'm going to leave this video for you to check it out. It's 3 minutes, 53 seconds in total. And you can get an idea. This is interesting. It looks like it has an opening right there, huh? Very interesting. I don't think I've seen one that has had an opening like that before. Have you? Okay, moving from there, next, this is near Camp Pendleton, which is in San Diego, Mir Marine Base. Camp Pendleton, did you see strange lights in the sky? Our KCAL 9 street team mobilized Wednesday night after receiving several reports of orange lights appearing in various parts of Southern County, Orange County. 53 second video. There we go. Very interesting indeed. So, made made the news, and of course, the news quite quite aren't certain what to expect from these today. You know, we still we still have media personalities that are still in the dark when it comes to these things. It's so bizarre that these things could exist. You know what's so bizarre? It's so bizarre that there's people that in 2014 still laugh about things in the sky when there's been reports that have been going back all the way to the time of Christopher Columbus and beyond. Very silly. Very silly the way humans behave. I don't think I'll ever understand. I certainly don't think I will. And maybe... Maybe when I leave this planet and return back to my home world, maybe I'll write a book about humans and their strange behavior patterns. Okay, this video here is a link to a video which I posted last week. You might have had a chance to see it. If not, here's another link from uh, another site here. This was the mystery behind the story of the UFO underground base in Antarctic. This was the story in the video that's 30 minutes in length, just shy of 30 minutes. And this is the one that talks all about Hitler's military program and the program specifically dealing with UFOs and the Antarctic and an underground base they built there and so on. It's quite fascinating. Quite fascinating story. So I would check it out if you're interested in the UFO phenomena, which I'm guessing that you are. Definitely check that one out. And this last one here is a piece that is 36 minutes long. It is a footage of Bud Hopkins. Bud Hopkins passed, um, I believe it was last year. Bud Hopkins was a gentleman who was helping those who have been abducted by recording and their sessions and, and helping them understand what went on. He's done it for quite some time. and. Here's a clip from one of his interviews. Okay, let me read it here. It says, rare footage of interview with Bud Hopkins and abductees Debbie Tomei and Dorothy Wallace. Also interviewed is abduction hypnotherapist Dr. Gottlieb. The woman named Kathy, Kathy Davis, also spelled Kathy Davis in the book, Intruders by Bud Hop Hopkins, was actually... Debbie Tomei, Bud changed her name to Kathy in the book to protect her identity. In this video, this is the first time Debbie comes out to the public with her real name. Okay, so interesting stuff in here, but I'm going to leave it for you to check it out. I'm going to jump away, and I'll be right back, and we shall continue on. Stay tuned.
Another alien visitor claimed that his race had been looking in on us for centuries, and that they had in fact influenced the course of human history in some rather critical and startling ways. Listen up. I am myself, and I am someone else. I've seen For it is the time Dimensions of space Traveling through the universe friends everything is possible just gotta see with an open mind okay before we get into our continuation of the book of Urantia I got a few thoughts on my mind I thought I would share while I have this opportunity so I often think to myself you know in doing these shows what I'm going to talk about I plan out each show. I I am conscious of the information I'm presenting during this forum, during this you know during this time because there's a lot of things going on in the world, and I think it's very important that we make sure we are honest with each other and that we inform each other about things that are necessary and important for us to know. I don't think it's a good idea to deceive others. I think it's a bad idea because ultimately one deception leads to the next deception and so on and so on. And then you get down the line and you find yourself in a big deal of trouble. And that's where it seems that we are in the world these days. That we've allowed little white lies to become bigger and bigger lies until we've come to this point in history where lies are now accepted as truths. And those that tell the biggest lies are the ones that we choose to put in positions of power. And then when these people that we put in positions of power get in there and continue to tell the lies that they told before getting into power, we always seem so surprised at the lack of honesty that is coming from our organizations that are the leadership organizations. It's like we're going backwards. And sometimes... It's challenging to sit and watch the intelligence that is being displayed before our very eyes from our government leaders and have to and, and not think that we are going backwards. You know, case in point, any given day, you can turn on the news or you can go to C-SPAN and you can watch what is taking place in the world of politics here in the United States of America. It's a sad situation. It's gone from worse to worse to worse. Every year, we or every four years, we are given the choice of the lesser of two evils. But in either case, you're putting up somebody that is in the category of evil. We just want the less of it. We don't ever say we're going to put up somebody good so that we can have somebody good. We're just going to get the lesser of evils. Why is that? Do we not feel as a society that we can really, we deserve to have somebody good in position of power? Do we not know when we have a world going on how to treat ourselves that way? Or do we always have to be in this mindset of war and, and enemy consciousness in order to move ahead? Last night, or yesterday afternoon, I was watching C-SPAN and was watching this case which is taking place with the IRS and they were grilling this IRS director the chairman and I'm telling you it's just ridiculous you probably have kids in grade school that could tell the lies very easily just by paying attention they'd know that these people are lying 
but yet we sit there and we're supposed to believe the dog ate their paper. You see, if you or I or any other American were sequestered by the IRS to turn in a certain amount of papers and we didn't do it, you know where we would be? In jail. In jail. With a fine. Yet, the very organization that threatens all Americans has no problem saying that the dog ate their homework. The emails were lost, and we're supposed to believe that. In a world, in a country that has the technology that we have, in a country that understands the way that computers work, the way that we do, in a country that has companies like Amazon and Facebook and some of the largest internet-based companies that exist. In this country where we have this computer science, literally down to a science, we still have somebody from an IRS agency get up and tell us their lost emails. It's silly, folks. It's silly. Because today it's lost emails, yesterday it was something else that was lost, the day before it was something else. And we can get so easily caught up in all of this nonsense from day in and day out. We could turn on the TV and say, oh no, there's a war that's going to happen. Oh no, they're going to take our money from us. Oh no, they're going to do this. Oh no, they're going to do that. And I guarantee you, if you were to do a a day where you would go back and you were to watch news from 20 years ago, you could flip through the same news channels and say the same things. Oh no, they're going to take away our freedoms. Oh no, they're going to do this. And it's the continual same story they tell over and over. Because all that is being pushed on the people is fear. Imagine if we got rid of this factor of fear. Imagine if all of the personalities that worked for the media companies and these news companies Imagine if they just all one day spontaneously just disappeared off the planet. Imagine if all of these news agencies, the mainstream news agencies, just spontaneously disappeared off the planet. Imagine how much more evolved we might be when we're not being told lies about what's going on. We might get, get somewhere in this world if we really stepped away from it. Because there's a lot of good people all around this planet that understand truthfulness and honesty but those people aren't the leaders and yet we convince ourselves that we need to listen to the leaders tell us about things that we need to do which are dishonest and deceitful and horrendous we need to stop listening to them we need to stop following that lead we need to realize that if we pull away from their system of control, we don't lose control, we gain more control of who we are. The only reason they have power is because you and others have chosen to give them power. Don't give them power and they won't have any power. Because as you can see from listening to what these politicians, and when I say politicians, I'm talking about Democrats and Republicans and everybody else. They're all part of the same mix. I'm not going to pretend that a Democrat and a Republican are different because I know otherwise. And anybody who knows otherwise should know also. So we have to stop dividing ourselves according to the way that the government chooses to divide us because it's not doing us any good. We need to understand the basics of truth versus lies. And right now we're having some challenges with that. And we need to be able to focus our attention, just like the magician, focus our attention on what we want and let go of the things we don't. We don't need corrupt governments. So let's just let them go and disappear, destroy themselves. We don't need corrupt bankers taking our livelihoods or threatening us. We don't need corrupt IRS systems that are out there stealing from people. We don't need corrupt covert agencies. So as far as I'm concerned, they could all just spontaneously disappear off this planet and we'd be better off without them. We could also just decide not to listen to them, not to give them our power and our time and our energy. 
because you'll find, as I've said to start this rant off, if you go back 20 years from now, you find the same complaints and the same fears being pushed out against the people as they are now. There's just more technology, so the fears are able to be put out through much more channels. Just ignore the fears. Ignore them. Turn your back against them. They're there, and if you really want to have them, they'll be there in 10 years. They'll be there in 50 years, because there's always some idiots out there who want to keep pushing fear. But there's a lot of smart people who'd want to stay away from it. All right, there you have it. I have my little rant. That's what's going on. I just, it's just strange watching on a daily basis. People lie to each other, and then other people believing the lies, and then people who know the truth trying to justify the lies that were told to unravel them to figure them out. This is exactly why studies have been done to show that people that watch the mainstream news and expect them to tell the truth are not getting news but are actually being more confused. People that watch mainstream news, Fox, MSNBC, CBS, CNN, NBC, all of them, people that watch the mainstream news, again, according to studies, know less about the world than what is, less about what's going on in the world than people who don't even watch any at all. And the only reason is because all of those mainstream channels are throwing in extra stuff, throwing in lies. So you have to unravel the lies before you even get to the truth. People aren't even watching that stuff and they know, know better. So, we've got to fix ourselves by turning away from the lies. And we can all individually do that. You can do it today by turning away. One person at a time. One person at a time is all it takes. Okay. Switching gears back to the book of Urantia. So, last week, we got into talking about Andon and uh, Fanta, the first family. Now, we're going to move into... This next section is paper 64, the next one over. It's called The Evolutionary Races of Color. This is the story of the evolutionary races of Urantia from the days of Andon and Fanta, almost one million years ago, down through the times of the planetary prince in the end of the Ice Age. The human race is almost one million years old, and the first half of its story roughly corresponds to the pre-planetary prince days of Urantia. The latter half of the history of mankind begins at the time of the arrival of the planetary prince and the appearance of the six colored races and roughly corresponds to the period commonly regarded as the Old Stone Age. Primitive man made his evolutionary appearance on Earth a little less than one million years ago and he had a vigorous experience. He instinctively sought to escape the danger of mingling with the inferior simian tribes but he could not migrate eastward because of the because of the arid Tibetan land elevations 30,000 feet above sea level. Neither could he go south nor west because of the expanded Mediterranean Sea, which then extended eastward to the Indian Ocean. And as he went north, he encountered the average avenging ice. But even when further migration was blocked by the ice and through the dispersing tribes became increasingly hostile, the more intelligent groups never entertained the idea of going southward to live among the hairy, tree-dwelling cousins of inferior intellect. Many of man's earliest religious emotions grew out of this feeling of helplessness in the shut-up environment of the geographic situation. Mountains to the right, water to the left, and ice in front, but these progressive Andonites would not turn their back to their inferior tree-dwelling relatives in the south. These Andonites avoided the forest in contrast with the habits of their non-human relatives. In the forest, man had always deteriorated. Human evolution has made progress only in the open and in the higher latitudes. The cold and the hunger of the open land stimulate action, invention, and resourcefulness. While well, those Andonic tribes were developing and pioneers of the present human race, amidst the hardships and privations of these rugged northern climes, their backward cousins were luxuriating in the southern tropical forests of the land of their early common origin. These events occurred during the times of the Third Glacier. First, according to the reckoning of geologists, the first two glaciers were not extensive in North Europe. Okay, and we go 950,000 years ago, descendants of Andanafanta migrated far to the east and to the west. 
to the west they passed over Europe and France and England in later times they penetrated eastward as far as Java where their bones were recently found it's the Java man okay then we got the Fox Hill peoples 90, 900,000 years ago the arts of Andan and Fanta and the cultures of Onagar were vanishing from the face of the earth culture religion even flint working were the lowest ebb these were the times when large numbers of inferior mongrel groups were arriving in England from southern France. These tribes were so largely mixed with forest ape-like creatures that they were scarcely human. They had no religion but were crude flint workers and possessed sufficient intelligence to kindle fire. Uh, they were followed in Europe by somewhat superior and prolific race, whose descendants soon spread over the entire continent from the ice to the north in the Alps and to the Mediterranean in the south. These tribes are so-called Heidelberg race. During this long period of culture dis decadence, the Fox Hill peoples of England and the bone butted in tribes northwest of India continued to hold on to some of the traditions of Andan and certain remnants of the cultures of Onagar. Okay, and then we have the Bad Badadon tribes. Besides the Fox Hill people in the west, another struggling center of culture persisted in the east. This group is located in the foothills of northwest Indian highlands among the tribes of Bedadon, the great grandson of Adon. Andon, the peoples were the only descendants of Andon who never practiced human sacrifice. These highland Bedonites occupied an extensive plateau surrounded by forest, traversed by streams, and abounding in game. Like some of their cousins in Tibet, they lived in crude stone huts, hillside grottoes, and semi underground passages. While the tribes of the north grew more and more to fear the ice, those living near the homeland of the origin became exceedingly fearful of the water. They observed the Mesopotamian peninsula gradually sinking into the ocean, and though it emerged several times, the traditions of these primitive races grew up around the dangers of the sea and the fear of periodic engulfment. And this fear, together with the experience of river floods, explains why they sought out the highlands as a safe place where to live. Okay, then we go to the Neanderthal races. The Neanderthals were excellent fighters and they traveled extensively. They gradually spread from the highland centers of the northwest India to France on the west, China on the east, and even down to northwest Africa. They dominated the world for almost half a million years until the times of the migration of the evolutionary races of color. Okay, and so it breaks them down here into the years and the experiences of Neanderthal man. Now we're going to go look at this one. The origin of the colored races. That's right. Colored races. This isn't a racist statement. This is a statement of what happened 500,000 years ago, which is half a million years ago. The Badonan tribes of northwest highlands of India became involved in another great racial struggle. For more than 100 years, this relentless warfare raged. And when the long fight was finished, only about 100 families were left. But these survivors were the most intelligent and desirable of all the then living descendants of Andon and Fanta. And now, amongst these Highland Bedonites, there was a new and strange occurrence a man and a woman living in the northeastern part of them inhabit, inhabited Highland region began suddenly to produce a family of unusually intelligent children. This was the Sanjik family, the ancestors of all of the six colored races of Urantia. These Sangic children, nineteen in number, were not only intelligent above their fellows, but their skins manifested a unique tendency to turn various colors upon exposure to sunlight. Among these nineteen children were five red, two orange, four yellow, two green, four blue, and two indigo. These colors became more pronounced as the children grew older, and when these use later mated with their fellow tribesmen, all the offspring tended towards skin color of the Sangic parent. And now I interrupt this chronological narrative after calling attention to the arrival of the planetary prince about this time, while we separately consider the six Sangic races of Urantia. Can an average evolutionary planet the six evolutionary races of color appear one by one. The red man is the first to evolve, and for the ages he roams the world before succeeding color 
before the succeeding colored races make their appearance, the simultaneous emergence of all six races on Urantia and in one family was most unusual. The appearance of the earlier Andonites on Urantia was something new in Satania, and no other world in a local system as such a race of will creatures evolved in advance of the evolutionary races of color. So one, we have the red man. These peoples are remarkable specimens of the human race, in many ways superior to Andon and Fanta. They were the most intelligent groups and the first of the Sangink children to develop a tribal civilization and government. Let's see down here. Two, the orange man. The outstanding characteristic of this race was their peculiar urge to build, to build anything and everything, even upon the piling up of vast mounds of stones just to see which tribe could build the largest mounds. The yellow man. This primitive yellow tribes were the first to abandon the chase establish settled communities and develop a home life based on agriculture. Intellectually, they were somewhat in inferior to the red man, but socially and collectively, they provided themselves superior to all of the Sangit peoples in the matter of fostering racial civilization because they developed the fraternal spirit of various tribes leaning to live together in relative peace. They were also able to drive the red race before them as they gradually expanded into Asia. The green man was one of the less able groups of the primitive man and were greatly weakened in, by extensive migrations in different directions. Before the dispersion, these tribes experienced a great revival of culture under the leadership of Fontad some 350,000 years ago. The blue man were of a great people. They invented the spear and subsequently worked out the rudiments of many of the arts of modern civilization. The blue man had brain power of the red man associated with the soul and sediment of the yellow man. The Adamic descendants preferred them to all of the later persisting colored races. The indigo race, as the red man were almost advanced in the Sangic peoples, so the black man were their least progressive. They were the last to migrate from their highland homes, the journey to Africa taking possessions of the continent and they have ever since remained there except when they were taken forcibly away from age to age as slaves. Isolated in Africa, the indigo people like the red man received little or none of the race elevation which had been derived from the infusion of the Adamic stock. Alone in Africa, the indigo race made little advancement until the days of Orvantan when they experienced a great spiritual awakening. While they later almost entirely forgot the god of gods, Claimed by Orvantan, they did not entirely lose the desire to worship the unknown. At least they maintained a form of worship up to a few thousand years ago. And then it gets into how these different races dispersed. It says, when the colored descendants of the Sangic family began to multiply, and as they sought opportunity for expansion into the adjacent territory, the fifth glacier and a third of the geologic count was well advanced on the southern drift over Europe and Asia. These early colored racers were extraordinarily tested by the rigors and the hardships of the glacial age of the origin. This glacier was so extensive in Asia, for thousands of years migration to eastern Asia was cut off, and not until the last retreat of the Mediterranean Sea, consequent upon the elevation of Arabia, was it possible for them to reach Africa. Thus it was, for almost 100,000 years, these Sangic people spread out among the foothills and mingled together more or less, notwithstanding the particular, but nature natural antipathy which manifested itself between the different races. Okay, and there's more to this article here. Just finishing out where they dispersed to. So very interesting, okay? So colored races upon the planet, it's not something new. Okay, it's been going on for a long time. And I know that there are those out there that say, our race has been here for thousands of years. We are the oldest race on the planet. Well, maybe. Maybe you are from a race that is one of the oldest on the planets. But I certainly expect that if you're claiming to be from a race that's from one of the oldest races on the planet, I would expect you and your race to be the most evolved. Yet I don't really see this out there. I don't see any particular race that is so far advanced or evolved or any other races. So despite the uh, lip service that people give to how long they've been here and as if that's some sort of badge of courage, well, the accompanying uh, 
evolution doesn't seem to always match with the amount of time someone has spent here. So maybe we need to reconsider some of the things we think are important and relook at our evolutionary stance because we should be a little bit further along than we are. At least it seems like it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but it certainly seems like we have the opportunity, especially when so many claim that we've been here for such a long period of time. Either that or we're just really, really on a whole pretty stupid that we haven't been able to get it over all these years. I don't know which one it is, but uh, that's what it seems to be. All right, moving on. Here's an article. This one's from N5D. This is uh, Garmia Roy. The relation between the moon and the human mind. Everything around us has an effect on something within us, be it our exposure to the sun's ultraviolet radiation, looking at the morning sky, taking a walk in the forest, or swimming in the sea. Nature's beauty prompts the flow of hormones and energy in our body. But not everything that's present in nature is fundamentally good for human beings. The moon, romanticized by poets and artists since ages, has a series of negative effects on the human mind, scientifically and spiritually. Both scientists and research institutions have conducted experiments over the years to study the effect of the moon in full moon nights on the human mind and behavior. It is concluded that the moon does influence humans and other species on Earth. According to quantum physics, everything moves in the universe. Stars, planets, satellites, or even the moon has an operating frequency. The frequency emanated by the moon's affects the frequency of the mind that exerts control over our feelings, emotions, and desires. The mind, which consists of conscious and subconscious mind, reacts to the standing and the positioning of the moon in the sky. We aren't aware of our thoughts in our subconscious mind, as a large number of us function solely by using 10% of our conscious mind. Subconscious mind is the collective storehouse of impressions, memories, and thoughts accumulated over the years, and lifetime has a higher operating frequency in comparison to that of the moon. One needs constructive thinking and observatory skills to get into the realms of the subconscious mind. Then we get into the tides of the moon and how that affects us. We talk about that with astrology. And the last one here, in order to not let the moon vibrancies take you over, be vigilant about your own vibrations, be watchful of your behavior, impulses, and thoughts on moon days. Since new moon asks us to be part of our unconscious to rise up, you can use this as an opportunity to cleanse your mind off of those thoughts which tend to bother and disturb you. New moon energy can be used in favor if we choose to harness the energy to reflect and create a better self. And, of course, we have a new moon coming up. Just remember, it's all about energy. It's all about energy. There's energy all around us. And energy has, think about a circuit board. There's different capacitors. There are different uh, circuits and pieces of the board that gather energy, hold energy, store it, move it around. That's what we're doing. We're moving energy around. The planets and the stars, they move. They affect the energy. The moon, it affects the energy. It affects us. We're all electromagnetic beings that are affected by these tides of the suns and the moons and the planets. So when we're able to understand that, we're able to get in synchronicity with that, we learn a great deal about ourselves and life. Rather than fighting against life, we're working with it. Because we know that a new moon, the cycle goes, the new moon to the full moon is like the tide going out and then the tide coming in. And so if we work with that tide going out and tide coming in activity, we can do a lot more with our energy because we know when we're sending out and when the energy is coming back. And if we learn to work simply with the tides of nature, it makes a big difference in how we are doing things. Definitely makes a big, big difference. All right, then that brings us to our channeled message for today which today is from Salute. Salusa. June 20th, 2014, by Mike Quincy. Salusa. I greet you again and note that so many more of you are awakening to the increase in vibrations. They are gradually introducing you to the new levels that are being established as you enter deeper into the photon belt. The result is that you are experiencing heightened senses of what is going on around you and beginning to understand the oneness in which you exist. Gone are the times when you felt alone and isolated, and now you can appreciate and feel the higher energies that are very uplifting. Furthermore, your levels of consciousness are expanding, 
and with it comes a greater understanding of higher levels of existence. You are lifting up and being carried along by the higher vibrations, and those souls who have progressed at a slower rate are finding it hard to keep up. However, as we have intimated previously, there will be a dividing of the ways and that will place souls at a level that suits them to enable the continuing progress of their evolution. The fact is dear ones, that where your evolution is concerned you cannot stand still. There is also a driving force within you that subconsciously seeks expression, and you will always seek higher and higher levels of consciousness. As you progress back to the light the journey becomes much easier and your goals more clearly defined. With you are other souls that also follow the same path and you become a unit of consciousness where you all become the one, yet you retain your own level and individuality. You will always be drawn to souls who have a similar vibration to your own, making evolution a most satisfying achievement. However, at your present stage you are still so to say, finding your feet and seeking out the path that fulfills your needs. Your destiny and success are assured, but you still have a long way to go on your spiritual journey back to the Godhead. As we see it the present time is most exciting for you as at long last you are lifting up out of the lower vibrations, having surmounted the many challenges that have faced you. It has been a journey that has at times sorely tested you, but you have a driving force with you that keeps you pushing forwards at all times. You have now reached a stage when by comparison it will become a lot easier to progress, and you will not be challenged at every turn by the lower vibrations. You will in fact notice how much easier life moves along in harmony with your desires and is more fulfilling. So you can release any attachment to the vibrations that no longer serve your purpose. From here on you will rise up more rapidly and life will become a pleasure providing you do not maintain your past links with situations that have proved to be of a negative nature. You are progressing to a point when you will break your associations with anything less than the light, as they no longer serve your true purpose. To some of you the tasks ahead may sound frightening, but bear in mind that there is always help not far away if you need assistance. Indeed, there are unlimited sources of help and there is no situation that cannot be overcome. Your progress is followed at all times by those souls that dwell in the higher dimensions, and particularly at this time because your success is also important to their evolution. Every soul has numerous helpers that cover each stage of your evolution as if you were to fail, the delay would put back their evolution, but have no fear as your future success is assured. Also do not be concerned about other souls that you may know as all of you will find your exact level quite automatically and there cannot be any mistakes in this respect. Every living thing whether animate or inanimate is progressing and evolving however slowly, and you are what you might say, the center piece that is evolving very quickly. It is probably a good time to remind you that you came to earth by dropping down through the various levels. So as you rise up again you are in fact returning to levels that you were once present in before this particular time. Life is all about experiences, and once you rise up out of the lower dimensions you will have more say in where your future incarnations take you. Life abounds everywhere in the universe, and whilst on earth you have been isolated for your protection to prevent interference with your evolution. It is true that certain ET species have been allowed to contact you over many centuries, but their presence has been monitored and carefully followed. They have been allowed to alter your future by their actions but only to give you experiences that have assisted your evolution. As you will learn in the not too distant future, you have in fact been held back from truly evolving by the dark ones you have been prevented from advancing further into the true space age, by not being allowed to benefit from progress denied you by those who have kept it for themselves. However, once they are out of the way we can openly meet you and your evolution will take a giant step forwards. We hope you understand the full implications of the period you are in, and if you can stand aside and let events progress as needed, you will be much better for it. Naturally some of you are unavoidably drawn into the issues of the day, and if so simply make allowances for what needs to take place to bring you fully into the new age. Your responsibilities in the end times may be already be known to you, but if not by finding a quiet period and going inside yourself as you do for meditation, you should be able to come to the realization of what it is. If not simply keep an open mind and be prepared for something new to come your way. Certainly most light workers will be called upon to do their bit to bring the changes into being. 
Every little helps to form the larger picture which will become apparent in a relatively short time. I am Salusa from Sirius, and enjoy these times when we can use our influence to prepare you for the new age that you have recently entered. You will benefit from having experienced the changes and in fact are privileged to be present on Earth at such a time. The best is still to come whilst the present period is somewhat volatile because of the changes. Thank you, Salusa. All right, good message from Salusa again, confirming what we know about these changes that are taking place in our lives. So, let's move forward into our meditation for today. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Take another deep breath. And exhale again. Then breathe again, and as you breathe in and out, just feel the rhythm of your breath. Breathe in and out and feel the rhythm of life flowing through you. Now, I want you to remember the stories that have been told about our planet, planet Earth, going through a dimensional shift. And these stories talk about the Earth separating, pulling apart. So I want you to imagine the Earth and then imagine one Earth moving to the right and one to the left as if these two worlds, the one Earth is being pulled into two. And as it's being pulled into two, we have two energetic vibrations taking place. One vibration is a higher vibrational frequency and one is a lower vibrational frequency and as these two separate slowly pulling apart people on the planet have the opportunity to decide where they want to be do they want to be on the lower vibrational planet or do they want to be on the higher vibrational planet and so we think about where we want to be what we want to do we understand what we want in life is love, positivity, happiness, prosperity, abundance. And we realize that all of these are higher conscious thoughts and therefore we put our consciousness, we put our energy towards that direction. And as we understand that this direction is of the world that is pulling apart that 5D world, we put our attention there. And then we just imagine the other planet and we imagine all of those who are caught up in the ideas of war and fear-mongering and hatred and anger. We just imagine them still on that world and see these worlds pulling apart. And then like two ships pulling apart from each other, we actually can see this other planet, the other version of the earth the lower consciousness version drifting away and we can see all of the people that we know are problem makers all of the politicians that are the problem makers are stuck on that earth all of the bankers who are the problem makers the teachers the police officers the doctors the lawyers everyone you can think of that is a problem maker not somebody that has a potential to be good, but someone that is causing problems. Does not want to raise their consciousness above that. We just see them on that other world. And as we see them on the other world, we recognize that they are not present in this higher conscious realm. And we wave goodbye and we tell them good luck because we know that in their warlike mentality, where they are headed, and we let them go, we send them love, and we let them go. And eventually we just see that world and all of them disappear out of view. Because we're raising our consciousness higher and higher. And here we are on a planet of love and light and harmony and peace. And as we go through the world, we still notice some of these echoes that are going on of doubts and fears and we realize they are nothing more than that just echoes the things of the past and as we let them go we take the power away from them and 
they fade away. And as we move through life, experiencing the new energies, the positivity, we find that we do not miss those who are causing the problems. We actually rejoice for their disappearance has brought peace to us. So let's just imagine this world of peace. A world without any of the problem makers, without any of the politicians, without any of the police or the military or the bankers or the warmongers. Just a world of peace and love and harmony. Where we all get together to enjoy, to create together, to consider the possibilities. So ask yourself now, do you deserve to be living in this world of positivity? And if so, then claim this for yourself right now by stating that you claim this positivity, this world of love and positivity for yourself right here, right now. And let your subconscious mind continue on this journey of sending love and light into the world and seeking out all the positivity you can find. And let's bring our conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three. Three, coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one, coming back to the present moment happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. Take another deep breath. Exhale. And open your eyes. That's it, my friends. That is our show for today. Thank you very much for being here. here let me add... Uh, affirmation to contemplate as you go through the day. I acknowledge my own self-worth. My confidence is soaring. Something to uh, consider as you go through the day. Just have fun. Trust yourself. Trust the positivity that's ahead of us. And let go of all the other. It'll be there ten years from now if you still want it. You can go and find and flip on the television. You can go back in the past if you want to relive it. But you don't have to. We can let it all go now. Live in that world of positivity. That's where I choose to be. And I know that's where you choose to be too. That's it. I love you. Talk to you tomorrow. Have an awesome day. Peace. I'm out of here.